helicopter is also a valuable tool in emergency situations where response time is absolutely critical. Helicopters have saved lives in daring rescue scenarios as air ambulances and in fighting forest fires. But what about the future? The future is what is so bright because we have here a vertical lift technology that can fly people in urban environments into crowded, congested airports. Flater says there are two things limiting what the helicopter can do, our imagination and our appreciation of this aircraft. We can do it, I think, as well by educating the public into the tremendous applications helicopters have in their daily lives and improving society and mankind. Now, there's another problem with what most helicopters can do, and it's the tail rotor. Most helicopter pilots consider the tail rotor a necessary evil. They can't fly without it, but it's a source of constant danger. U.S. Army figures indicate that fully 15% of helicopter accidents can be attributed to the problems with the tail rotor, either rotor failure or collision between the rotor and another object. But now, there is a revolutionary new type of helicopter on the market. They call it the NOTAR, or No-Tail Rotor Helicopter. Bruce, you've had a chance to fly one of those. What did you think of it? Well, in a word, I have to tell you it's fantastic. Tail rotor's been in the back of a helicopter for the 50 years that it's been in existence, but it's really not the best way to do it. What the NOTAR has done is it's made it easier on the pilot to fly, it's made it safer, much more efficient. I'll bet, Donna, that this tail rotor in 10 or 15 years is going to go the way of a hand crank in front of a car to start it up. Well, David George has more on this innovation. Ever since they were invented, helicopters have looked pretty much like this. Big rotor on top, little rotor in the back. That little rotor in the back can cause big problems. It's a high energy device that spins very quickly. Uh, people run into them at, with disastrous effects. And they hit things also with, with equally disastrous effects on the aircraft and, and usually the people inside. From the very beginning, helicopter makers wish they could do something about the tail rotor. It's always been something that you had to have. You wish it wasn't there. If there was another way to do it, uh, we would have done it a long, long time ago. Now, McDonnell Douglas has done it. With no tar, a helicopter with a fan in back where the rotor used to be. The fan pushes air under and around the tail and out the end of the tail at 200 miles an hour. That sounds dangerous. But it's ambient. It's cool. And the worst that would happen to it, it would mess your hair up. So that's, that's quite a change. Pilots love it. They say the NOTAR technology gives them more control than they ever had before and lets them land in places they never could before. In this demonstration in the Arizona desert, the pilot actually puts the chopper down on top of a small tree. If we had been a police helicopter responding to an emergency or a medical services helicopter, uh, that's an indication of how much closer we could actually have gotten to, to a survivor or a, or a victim uh, in, in order to provide the kind of aid that those folks provided. The Phoenix Police Department took delivery of the first NOTARs off the line. Police say the new helicopters are much quieter than older models. Clear. And that makes it easier for them to sneak up on the bad guys. You generally can't hear us coming uh, over the normal city uh, noise until we're about a 45 degree angle right up above. We're right there when you can hear us. NOTAR technology represents a quantum leap in helicopter design. This, I would consider, is the, one of the last radical changes you could have on a conventional helicopter before you start going with non-conventional chill rotors, that sort of thing. McDonnell Douglas builds the NOTAR in the same factory that produces the super-sophisticated Apache gunships used in the Gulf War. The company says helicopter design will continue to evolve in the 21st century. We have things on the drawing board now uh, that allow us to land a helicopter by just pointing a uh, sensor spot on a, on, a, on a space, a landing field. We can land in any weather. Uh, we have uh, electronic flight controls that allow a layman to fly a helicopter with no flight experience. And as for quantum leaps, well, maybe we haven't seen the last one. The next quantum leap is to add speed to the low speed characteristics of the helicopter and add it in a cost-effective manner. And that's the real breakthrough. And once we do that, then the utility of the helicopter becomes universal. But just how universal can helicopters really become even in the 21st century? NOTAR's designer says helicopter sales aren't likely to increase significantly until the price of high technology comes down. And advances in technology, unfortunately, uh, cause
cause price to go up. And until we can get the price down to match with the technology, we're all sort of stuck. We would like to see a helicopter in every garage, but, but that probably won't happen for many years. That's probably just as well. After all, can you imagine the 21st century teenager? Dad, I've got a date. Can I use the chopper tonight? David George, CNN, Future Watch. Bruce, I don't know if you've heard of this uh, saying or if you agree with it, that real pilots fly helicopters and the others just dabble at it. <laughs> I don't know who said it, but I'll buy that. <laughs> <laughs> well, for those of us who don't have a pilot's license or access to a chopper, a computer simulation may be the next best thing. Gunship 2000 from Microprose Entertainment gives you the chance to pilot some of the world's most sophisticated helicopters. John Abbott has more in this week's Future Bites.